So this is a video to overview capital budgeting techniques. So capital budgeting. The first problem is a project has a cash flow uh, as below. So they put an outlay of five thousand dollars. They spent five thousand, and then for years one, two, three, four, and five, they get this different cash flow: twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, eighteen hundred, two thousand, and twenty-two hundred. So the goal of this capital budgeting is the payback period. So calculate the payback period. In order to calculate the payback period, I'm going to copy this information and paste it below. This is years. This is cash flow. Next to the cash flow, I'm going to do cum cash, which is cumulative cash flow. In order to calculate payback period, we have to know when the cumulative cash flow goes from negative to positive. So the very first year zero, the outlay, is equal to year zero. So it's a negative $5,000 cash flow. At the end of year one, the cumulative cash flow is the negative money plus the amount of money we had in year two. In year three, it's the ending balance in year one plus what we had in year two and so on. So this number plus this equals this equals this number plus this. So right now I know that somewhere between year the end of year three and the end of year four the cash flow turns positive. So payback. I'm going to calculate this. We do nothing for year zero because that's not actually a year. For every year that has negative, we're going to put a 1 here. So that has a negative ending balance, negative ending balance, negative ending balance. That means three years have gone by. Now, we need to figure out So, we need to figure out what percentage is 500 and I'm going to put a negative sign because I don't want a negative number here. Divided by the $2,000. So 25%. So, or a quarter of a year. So the payback on this project is three and one quarter a year. We just add these together. Three point two five years. So this year we didn't get money. This year we didn't turn positive. It's payback is when are we going to get our money back? All right, moving on. The project below has a cash flow of an outlay of ten thousand. Then they get twenty five hundred, thirty five hundred, forty five hundred, and fifty five hundred. Calculate the project's net present value at fourteen percent. What's IRR and what is PI at fourteen percent? All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it and put it below. So remember, this is years. I'm going to label it so that we're clear on what we're looking at. This is cash flow. And our cost of capital is the 14%. So 14%. Okay, so in order to figure out NPV or net present value, we're going to use a function in Excel. So you're going to click on, I'm going to label this net present value, and I'm going to click on the cell next to it and go up to the FX box. I'm going to type in the box NPV, then I'm going to hit go. Okay. Now I'm going to select NPV from the form formula. So now it's asking for our rate. Our rate is our cost of capital. And then it's asking for a value. You can actually drag down the value, but do not include the negative number. So I'm not including the negative number because that is in present value. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm not done yet. This gives me the net present value of all the inflows. I have to go ahead and add the fact that I spent $10,000 into this because it's already in negative form. 
So my net present value for this project is $1,179. We want to accept if it's greater than zero, so we will accept this project. All right, now we want to do IRR, or internal rate of return. Internal rate of return. This is also a function in Excel. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to select IRR. It's already on my list, but if not, you can type it in the box. And click Go. Now, I'm not going to do anything but select all the cash flows, including the negative, and hit OK. So, we want to accept IRR for the project if greater than cost of capital. Our cost of capital is 14%, so we accept. And now we want to do PI or profitability index. So, the way we calculate profitability index is we take the MPV of inflows, MPV of outflows. All right. So, first of all, to calculate the MPV, I'm going to select MPV. My cost of capital is still 14%, and I'm going to oops, 14%, and then under values. It's all the inflows. So, and my net present value of the outflow is this. So, PI equals, and we're not going to use the negative number, equals my inflows divided by my outflows. But I'm going to change my outflows to a positive number. And we accept if greater than 1. And these are standard. We, the company might have some stricter rules for that. So we would accept this project. Because this is greater than 1. So, we'll go on and do another example. Now it's giving us a different pro project. We have A, and we have years, and cash flow. So they didn't set this up for us. We're going to have to set this one up. Zero, one, two. All right, so the first problem is for four years. They spent ten thousand dollars, and then they got thirty five hundred for four years. Then they have problem B, they spent thirty seven thousand. And they have fifteen thousand for three years. And then they have problem C, which is five years. They spent sixty five thousand. And they get seventeen thousand for three years, for five years. All right. So 
They want to know the NPV, IRR, and PI for each project. So let's start with net present value. Cost of capital for all the projects is 14%. Alright, so now we're going to set this up. NPV. So we're going to go into Excel. We're going to find NPV. I have it right here. I'm going to tell it the rate is 14%. Value is years 1 through 4. Click OK. Remember, this gives us the inflows. We now have to add back the outflow with in year 0. So, I just copied and pasted the formula um, to save myself time. Now we want to find the IRR. So, if I wanted to find IRR of the project, I just want to guess. I want to include the negative number here. Okay, click OK. I want to find the IRR, and I'm going to guess, and I want to find the IRR, and I'm going to guess all of these. Alright, and then I want to find the PI, I want to find it there, I want to find the PI here. So, we're going to check this, and, and PV. My cost of capital is still 14%. My values are here. My net present value of the outflow is here. And I'm going to take out inflows divided by my percent outflow. So this is a number and it's more than one. So we'll go back and talk whether we accept. Alright. I'm going to find my NPV of all of the outflow. Input here. Up. And then we take this number divided by negative this. We don't want a negative number here. And here we are. All right. Last one. Net present value. Cost of capital. All the input. Spend sixty five thousand to do this. Profitability index. Our inflows. Out of our outflows. Alright. So, back to our rules. Our net present value, we would accept this one. We would accept, uh, we would reject this one. And we would reject this because it's negative. We would accept this because it's higher than the cost of capital. We would reject, and we would reject. And again, we would accept this one, and these are less than one, so we would reject. One more example. Now, when we talk about mutually exclusive, we want to pick the project that's better. So we can only pick project A or project B. So let me copy this down here. Alright. So, we have the years, and then we have the cash flow from Project A. Uh, 
and we're going to compare these. So this is going to be project B. Each project has a cost of capital is 11%. Calculate the MTV and IRR for the project and then decide which one of these the company should go with. All right, so net present value. I'm going to go up to the function, MTV, click OK. Our rate is cost of the capital the inflows. Click OK. And then we're going to go back in here and add our outflow. Now we get this one this. So this one has a higher net present value. Let's do IRR. IRR. Guess all the values. Okay, so this one has a, they both have positive, they're both more than the cost of capital, but this one has a higher net present value and internal rate of return. So I would choose A due to higher MPV and IRR. This is an overview of capital budgeting.